Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we have a returning guest, which we don't often do. We have Keith Nestor, who was the pastor of one of the largest churches in his city, and then got kept getting tapped on his shoulder and came under the conviction of the Holy Spirit that he needed to become Catholic. I know he must have been concerned, what am I going to do? This is my whole life was to be a to be a, a Protestant pastor. Am I going to find any ministry opportunity, or what's God going to do? And uh, he's busier than about anybody I know. He's got, God's got him just totally empowered and on the, on the move. We'll be right back with our guest, Keith Nestor. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know, we've noticed during this last year something significant with the the whole corona crisis here in Hawaii. What's become real apparent to me is something actually quite phenomenal. In Hawaii, the family is still a very connected group. You know, when I walk down the beach, uh, a young, a man 10 years younger than me will always call me uncle. And there's still kind of like that company of men, even that kind of uncle, the younger men and the same with the women. And the concept of Ohana is not just a concept. When you look at the beach right now, there's no tourists, but there's tents set up all up and down Waikiki beach with families, with their children and their extended families, all enjoying a day at the beach. And the thing that my wife and I really, my wife specifically notices, Cindy specifically notices how there's still a company of men here. The men still gather. Maybe it's because uh, the, the mana, though, is in, in the mana'o, the power and the wisdom uh, is being shared, whether it's wave knowledge or fishing knowledge or, or work or whatever skill men have. There's just this sort of gathering of men. The men still... It's not just drinking beer and watching a, a football game. There's they're they're engaged in 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 doing things and and there's formation going on. There's that rite of passage that the young men go through here. Sometimes that rite of passage is just paddling out with uncle their first time at YMA Bay when it's twenty foot plus. But what we've noticed during this crisis is that the fathers with their children. We see fathers walking down to the beach carrying the surfboards and one or two or three keiki walking behind them carrying their little surfboards. And it's the mothers are often there too, but we're seeing the hearts of the fathers turn towards their children, and the children towards their fathers. The last book of the Old Testament, and I will turn the hearts of the fathers to their sons, and the hearts Ooh. of the sons to their fathers. And in Deuteronomy, God says, "I will carry you like a father carries his son." And so it's not just a father towards his children in the father's special relationship with their daughters. But right now, if you look at the wildness that's going on in the street, it's like as if there are no adult males around to, to, uh, to show the young men what a man is. When my son uh, ministered over in Nepal, uh, they, had to be, they had to have out lookouts up in the jungle trees uh, surrounding the villages. And Shane said, why? Well, he said, because they've come in and killed all the adult males and there's nothing to control or to show the young males how to behave and they're going crazy they'll run right through our our huts so it's time uh, for men to really be a model not just by example that's of course the most important lead by example but you need to get a hold of your sons and you need to have deep conversations with your sons about their relationship with God and about the virtues how to live a life of virtue. We have Keith Nestor with us today. I love Keith Nestor. He's he's a man's man. I'm going to lift up the book for those of you who uh, are watching on our YouTube version, The Convert's Guide to Roman Catholicism. <laughs> and it's a picture of Keith uh, looking up, and there's a huge uh, cross from Ash Wednesday. You know, sometimes they make a little one, but... This priest just nailed him, you know, like a big old bold cross on his head. And he's looking up at it like, so what's going on here, you know? What, and, and he's talking about his first year in the church. First year in the church, he was probably kind of like, like, what's going on? And the second year, it's like, oh, my gosh, I have too much ministry to deal with. So we're so proud of you, Keith, for the, the stand you, you made in your faith. And welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. 
Thanks, Bear. It's so great to be back here. And I remember coming on your show before, and that was really, I was just in the beginning stages of writing that book. And we talked about some of the titles of the chapters. And now here we are over a year later and it's out there. And and, and I've uh, seen you on EWTN and well, yeah, you've been on the journey changed. home, right, dude? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. You are Nihil Opstat. You are the, you know, if you, they won't let me on journey home, you know, so there you go. You've, you've arrived. If you've been, on, I love that show. Don't you? I love it. It's that was a show that for me was pivotal to my own conversion. I used to watch that show a lot back and that was even back before, you know, we really had YouTube and things like that. You had to like go to a website and type it in. Yeah. You know what? Me so, too. I, I watched well, as, as I was making my return trip, you know, it was Stephen Ray's book, the early church fathers and the journey home that just, I was riveted by that show. Did you get to meet Matt Swaim out there? Yeah, I did. Matt's, um, Matt's a great guy. And I got to, I got to spend quite a bit of time with him. Yeah. He's a character, isn't he? Yeah. He's, he's, he's smart, sort of isn't he? He's a smart he's guy. He's pretty smart. He's pretty smart. <laughs> Let's say something bad about him so, so we can harass him. I guess the biggest problem is that he's a Reds fan. I think it's, his, See, it's I, is it Boston Red Sox or Cincinnati Reds. I always mess with it. <laughs> I think he's, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he's from, I mean, they spend a lot of time in Ohio, but I think he lives on like near Washington, D.C. or something. Yeah. So. Yeah, it could be anything. I'm I'm with him every Monday morning on the on the Sunrise Morning Show for five minutes, which is really oh, fun. Great. It's really fun because I'm in Hawaii. That means I get up at twelve thirty in the middle of the night to be on their show for five minutes. <laughs> I'm I'm actually going on a podcast with him tomorrow night um, from Canada, so I'll be sure to let him know that that uh, you were hassling him a little bit on here. Yeah, you let's are. make sure. <laughs> yeah, I got to hassle him. Just tell him I called him the rookie. The rookie, I will do that. But well, no, it was a great experience going on the journey home. Just, just to just to be sitting there in that seat where I've watched so many other people share their journey to be there in that place. L the Lord just really humbled me in that because, you know, when I when I left my ministry, like you you kind of mentioned it. I, I I just was like, well, this is this is over for me. I'm done ministering in any kind of public way because I want to be Catholic and that, that wasn't, I didn't feel like those two things necessarily were going to, were going to come to a head again, but I just walked step by step into the Lord's church and was okay with that. And now he's brought it back in a way that I've never even could have imagined. Have you been to EWTN studios yet in no. Alabama? No. Well, I'll tell you, I, I identify with you so much because when I first went there, I was kind of on a discovery mission of my own. You know, I was trying to figure out what's really going on. I could feel the Lord was, was moving me propelling yeah. me. And I walked in there and there's this beautiful portrait of Mother Angelica as you walk into the reception area. It's a big, big, bigger than life portrait. And she's just looking back at you with her hands folded and she's smiling at you like, where have you been? And uh, yeah. I, I know something you don't know. Like she's like God's got something up his sleeve. And that's the feeling I have for you because your your obedience and your faithfulness uh, and watch how the Lord, Lord has just propelled you. It's so beautiful to see. Well, wow, I, I appreciate that. I feel like, you know, when, when you become a Catholic, and I talk about this in my book, but one of the things you're going to hear a lot is people will say, welcome home. And that's a weird thing to hear in a place you've never been before. <laughs> but when you recognize what people mean by that, and you recognize that your home isn't so much about where you've been before, but it's about where you belong. Mm. And the truth of the Catholic faith that as a believer in Christ, you are now where he always intended you to be. And mm. that's a powerful way to understand that expression, isn't it, Bear? When someone yeah. says, welcome home, and you've never, it's kind of like what it's going to be like when we arrive in heaven, Lord willing. And, and the Lord says to us, welcome home. We've mm -hmm. never been there either, but yet that's where we belong more than anywhere else we've ever been. It's like uh, Robert, Father Robert Spitzer's books on the upper yearning of the soul. The, I think it's the, the different things we, we long for, justice, beauty, love, truth, but a sense of going home. And I know like for mm. me, when I'm out surfing in Waikiki, a place called Pops, a quarter mile out, at sunset, and the ocean is, is the, the sun is reflecting on the ocean so that the golden wave as it breaks looks like lava. And I look at Diamond Head in the distance and the fire of the tiki torches being lit at the beach, I go... It feels so great. This is when no place else on earth I'd rather be, but it still doesn't feel quite like home. I know there's someplace else. I know there's heaven. 
there's something in me that still yearns for that something else. But I'll tell you, my perspective on you is, you know, the new college football transfer portal, right? Where athletes can tra- football players can transfer from one team to others like as a Catholic yeah. I'm, I'm like oh man did we ever need a linebacker and <laughs> and he just transferred in from Nebraska you know it's like thank God we've got Keith on our team we need you so much and your ministry so much so we're just so thrilled that you're Catholic well, and you're with us okay so two things about that first of all I'm I'm about a half an hour away from Iowa City home of the Hawkeyes oh where I went to school, high school was like right across the border from Nebraska. So there's a big Iowa, Nebraska thing going on there. <laughs> yeah. But if you ever met me, I don't think you would say a linebacker. You'd probably say something like, you know, maybe the water boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's something like five, six and, you know, 170 you know, pounds. You come off like a, you come off like a King David or something. I mean, you just, you're the power of your, uh, your, your commitment. You, you, there's just such a, a personal presence about you that we know when we talk with Keith that we're talking with a man of God. Keith Nestor oh, has written this so book, The Convert's Guide to Roman Catholicism. It's such a great book. Like, what do you do in the first year of uh, of uh, being a Catholic? How do you survive that? And or how, what are all the like? For example, the the cover has a picture of him getting his uh, his ashes on Ash Wednesday. Like, what's that? And then he goes to where do you go to? Uh, Perkins, I guess, over there. For breakfast and everyone's and you forget you have the ashes on your head and wait a minute you were the pastor of what are you doing you were the pastor of that huge non-denominational church uh where can they find you keith what's your best website to find you so my website is down to earth ministry.org and the two is the number two so down to earth ministry.org um, down to earth is the ministry that i've started and the purpose of that ministry of course is to communicate the truths of the catholic faith in a clear engaging and challenging manner but in a way that's easy to understand um, yeah you do that so well this is bear wasnick we want to invite you guys to go to our website too uh, deepadventure.com we want to invite them the women we have a new place for you on our website it's called the mama bears god really spoke to us real clearly we needed to have a place there for the mama bears it was like someone came up with that concept the next day my son walks up and goes hey dad remember in montana when we had that cabin and we would see mama bears and just how fierce they were and how how protective they were of their cubs and and you know just how tough they were so they're not like the mama bears on uh, in goldilocks or in the three bears or whatever mama bears are fierce and so we're we have a place for you on our website where we can equip you to help uh, in, first of all you i know you love our all the teaching and all of our guests for yourself but we can equip you and help you engage with the men in your lives we'll give you some arrows for your quiver so that you can uh, reach out to the men in your life so go to deepadventure.com and and find out more about the mama bears we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure hey man i don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter you get free video content including the bear wasnick radio show video version on youtube before it even airs on ewtn and you can follow us on all of our social media go to deepadventure.com and subscribe get your free stuff and if you're watching on youtube don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell don't miss out mahalo for your kokua in supporting us Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your guide, Bear Wozniak. We have our co-adventure guide, Keith Nestor, with us, a recent convert to the Catholic Church. He's been on the journey home. It was so cool, man. I'm like, we got to interview Keith early on when he just had converted from being a pastor of a, a major church 
to convert into Catholicism and like free falling out of an airplane when you're skydiving, hoping the parachute opens. And uh, then I see him on journey home and I, oh, and I just it stopped me in my tracks and I just had to sit and watch the, the whole interview. But we're so glad that you're here, here with us, Keith, this, this book, um, The Convert's Guide to Roman Catholicism. What's the, uh, and I'm, I'm looking at just some of the chapter headings. What would you, what would you say are the, the three or four, it's like a cultural shock, first of all, right? Yeah, yeah. What's this with beads and ashes and kneeling and sitting and standing? So what's the first, what, what, what do you talk, what do you tell people that are asking you, hey, what, what's it like over there on that side of the fence? What do you tell them? Well, I think that there's a, so the biggest thing is there's a lot of, a lot of misconceptions that people have about what it's like to be a Catholic. And, you know, if you're, if you're a Protestant and, you know, when you go into the Catholic church, the first thing that you're struck with is the silence, you know, and because mm-hmm. you walk into like the church I used to be a pastor of and d- other different Protestant churches, and there's usually a lot of hype, there's energy, there's people talking, moving around, music playing, there's a countdown on the screen maybe, or things like that, and some kind of video playing or whatever. You walk into a Catholic church and it's like, it's almost like sometimes you feel like you're walking into a funeral. Mm. People are quiet and no one's talking and maybe somebody greets you, maybe they don't. And you're like, what do I do? What do I do? And there's, <laughs> there's like this, this weird sense. So I tell people, I'm like, look, you got to rec- you got to, first of all, just wait, because as soon as the service starts or the mass starts, it's going to get loud, you know, and because of all the kids in there and, and yeah. typically, <laughs> cause, cause it was funny. Cause like in our churches, we would take all the kids out so that it could be quiet during the service, but we wanted it loud before in the Catholic <laughs> church. It's, a lot, it's like the reverse, isn't it? It's like, we want it quiet before, yeah. but then as soon as it starts, here are the kids. And that yeah, was, well, a, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, we like to go to early mass, like 6 a.m. Yeah. mass here on Sundays, but my wife likes to go to the later mass because she just loves to hear the children crying. She just loves it. Yeah. My wife is the same way. She's, it makes her, it makes her wish we had little kids again, you know? <laughs> uh, but I, I think the biggest thing is to recognize how Christ centered the mass is. And I know that for mm. Catholics, they're going just, well, duh, of course. But the thing that you have to remember is that a lot of Protestants view the Catholic church as this, this institution that's so full of tradition and just different things, but that there's really no Bible or there's no Jesus affiliated with it. Because for a lot of Protestants, everything is revolving around two things, the the sermon and the music. And in the Catholic experience, it's about the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. Now for, so for, for Protestants who who experience Catholicism for the first time, or people who are looking to convert or, or learn more about it when they go into the mass and there's all of this liturgy and ritual, it can be a little bit um, a little bit of a jolt to the system. But once you begin to pay attention and look into things and understand what's happening, your mind just gets blown. You go, whoa, this is something way deeper than I've ever been a part of and mm. more Christ-centered in it. And when I say Christ-centered, I don't mean like we just talk about Jesus. I mean like the entire focus of the Mass is literally centered on the person of Jesus Christ. It, it, there's nothing like it. Mm. It's absolutely amazing. So my book is really to help people to understand, to understand those types of transitions, but also the other types of transitions that are going to happen when you show up and you don't know what you're doing necessarily, but what's it like? What does it feel like to be a Catholic? Mm. What, what's the culture like? And what, what are some of the differences you're going to experience? That's really what I wanted to capture in that essence, because if you go through some sort of RCIA program or a, or a individualized program, with your priest, like I did, then you get, you know, you just get dropped into the mass and, and <laughs> there's some things in, and in the parish life, it's not just about the mass, but just mm. the life of a Catholic. Mm. There's some things that are just different, different words are used, different things um, are talked about. And, you know, it can be a little bit of a transition. So I really wanted to help converts in their transition with that. You know, as a Catholic uh, going to Protestant masses too, or Protestant churches, I used to, back in the day we would go we would play music different places and it'd be like wow there's something missing <laughs> you know so it's, it was a cultural shock for me on the other way to yeah. go when when does the when does the eucharist get celebrated it just seemed like it was it, there was something that was missing so much even though i didn't really understand the, the mystery of the mass what about people wearing funny clothes <laughs> <The priest. laughs> <laughs> well here's here's the thing like you people wear funny clothes everywhere you know like are you talking about like the priest so yeah. What, yeah, when I first, I remember when I was like training to be a pastor, 
I was one of those guys. I'm like, I'm not wearing a robe. I want to be, I want to be the everyday man. I want to be relatable to my congregation. I don't mm-hmm. know if I'm wearing some kind of like dress or look like a Jedi, then people are going to look at me like I think I'm something special. So for me, at first, I was kind of like, I mean, I, obviously, I knew that about the Catholic Church, but the 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 type of Protestantism I came from, I was in the Methodist Church, but I was like, I was into contemporary worship. I wanted things to be fo- uh, informal and and you know really laid back so for me the idea of of the priestly vestments and stuff it took it it really what happened was i started to understand where this comes from in the scripture and you read in the Mm, old testament right vestments of the priests and because here's what it boils down to bear it boils down to this the role of a priest is not to be the mc of a worship environment and give a motivational talk right the role of a priest is to make sacrifice Mm -hmm. and When you connect those two things with the, you know, that role and the historic role of the priests of the old covenant, and you recognize that the, the, um, the priests of the new covenant, they're, they're doing the same thing. It's just one is the fulfillment of the other, but Mm -hmm. the priesthood itself, it's, it's still that sacrificial element of the Paschal mysteries of Christ. Then those things make a lot more sense. But when you strip that sacrificial element out of it, then of course there is no reason for a guy to wear a priestly vestment or to have an altar or to have a liturgy like that. So it's all about recognizing how all these things fit together. Then you start to go, Oh wow. Now every little thing in the mass, every little statement in some, in the different liturgies, every little thing that's, that's done, you know, the the four corners of the altar, everything, everything is so, so nuanced, isn't it? Yeah. I, and I'm still learning so much about it. And, and it, it's like when you really think about it and experience it, what happens to me oftentimes is I sit back and I, I, I have that, those moments with Christ, but then I think about it and I just go, man, all these poor people who've been raised in the Catholic church that never really made that connection or understood that. And then have just left the church because why? Because they thought it was boring and not relevant right. to their life. Yeah. That, yeah. And I look right. at what are you leaving? What are you missing when you do that to, because really, who cares about what's relevant to your earthly life? What matters is what's relevant to your to your eternal life. And when we when we sacrifice those things which are eternal to gain those things which are which are earthly, it's like I just I don't know. I, I just uh-huh. want to scream at Catholics all the time and say, Don't you realize how amazing this is? Have you ever have you ever trained in martial arts? Yeah, I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for okay. three years. And, All right, okay. And, uh, so I'm I've trained yeah. most of my life, not not lately, but I'm trained. You have a ninja black belt, and I've trained in Jiu Jitsu and things like that. You know how to, a wrist throw is? Yeah, yeah. You know how easy it is. I, I was doing a demonstration of a wrist throw at a church in Florida at a men's conference, and I told this friend of mine, "Come up here. You're going to attack me with this knife, and I'm going to basically, you know, kill you with your own knife after doing a wrist throw." I, I did a did a wrist throw and. His gun in his pocket flew out of his pocket. This is Florida, right? He didn't know I was going to throw him that hard. Um, a wrist throw is amazingly effective. It's one of my favorite things to do. It, you know, and yet it's just that little, it's just that little motion. And you know, in martial arts, if you put your finger right here on the neck instead of right there, it's a totally different effect. The Catholic Church is like that. A little. So many little things, like understanding Mary, and that's not, not a little thing, but so many little things. It's like a wrist throw. It seems so. It seems so minute, but has such dramatic effects, you know. Uh, and and so it's it's nuanced. The Catholic Church, from the big things to the little things, everything fits together so beautifully, and everything is. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? It's like a wrist throw. Absolutely. You know, it doesn't take a lot of power on your part. It's just a little nuanced thing, but delivers a real a real impact. So everything about the mass is just so, so, uh, the minutia of the mass is not minutia is what I'm trying to say. It's incredible. It's, it's it's a, it's a beautiful prayer and it is a beautiful expression of not only our love for God, but God's eternal love for us. And I love the fact that it's universal, that it is worldwide and that, um, it's all centered on the person of Jesus Christ. It's a beautiful, beautiful expression. Now you go around the world, like Cindy and I did a lot of traveling in the last several years, leading pilgrimages and stuff, going into, you know, into Greece and, 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 and East, you know, part of Eastern Europe and things like that. And uh, going into Puerto Rico, you know, all different places. 
the mass is the mass. It's not. It's not like a McDonald's franchise, but kind of is. You know, it's the the same readings are being done in uh, in Greece as they're being done in Puerto Rico. They're being done in Hawaii. The the mass is just this this each each Sunday each each mass for those who don't know about the Catholic Church. Um, the the same readings of Scripture. There's a three year thing that we go through a three year cycle. And every church in the world is reading the same scriptures at the same time. So it's so beautiful. We're talking with Keith Nestor, uh, a, a, a Protestant minister who left it all behind to become a Catholic, and now God's just, just really using him. What's your website again, Keith? Down to Earth Ministry dot org, and the de- the two is the number two. So down the number two Earth Ministry dot org. Down and to you Earth. Can find da- me on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, and down to Earth dot org. And what's your podcast? It's called Catholic Feedback. Is that what they look for on YouTube, Catholic Feedback, or your name? Yeah, well, if you just go, yeah, you could look for Catholic Feedback. It's on all the places where podcasts yeah. are found as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, if they just go to my YouTube channel, Keith Nestor, you'll find everything there. We're talking with Keith Nestor. This is your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We'll be right back. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bears Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We want to invite you guys, the men, is, the men we're speaking to right now, if you're of confirmation age or older, uh, to become a member of Bear's Man Cave. Uh, y- women, you can, you can get a membership for your husbands or your, your brother or your brother-in-law, your sons, to be part of Bear's Man Cave. Usually, Actually, it's 18 and up is, is who's allowed to be a member. Go to deepadventure.com, and there's a little button that says, Don't Enter, Danger, Warning. Hit that button, and you'll learn, up, learn more about the cave. You know, King David had the Cave of Adullam, which is really the Cave of Rejects. If you were, when he was running from King Saul, he had to hide out in this big old, in this cave, and all the rejects showed up, people who owed money, people who were on the run for maybe breaking the law, uh, just every kind of misfit showed up, and that's who we are at the man cave. We're just a bunch of misfits, but those men who gathered with King David, uh, strengthened each other, encouraged each other, learned how to fight. They became, King, they became King David's mighty band of warriors. And so come to the man cave, you know, uh, and, and join with us and, and be, uh, be, you know, help us, you know, inspire us uh, but already, but be prepared that the other men there will also have a great impact on your life on, you may see things in a new perspective. There may be things that you're ashamed about or things you don't understand. And with the other, the other men of the man cave, uh, we're able to encourage each other. It's a secret Facebook group. We can't join it by going to Facebook. Go to go to deepadventure.com. And we have Zoom video chat meetups about every every month. That's kind of a big thing now, but we, we, we've been doing it for a few years. And it's been really amazing, the impact it's had on people's lives. We have our guest today, Keith Nestor. He was a Protestant pastor of a major church in his city, and he became a Catholic. And what, what, what did you tell people when you first had that conversion? How did you explain yourself to them? Well, I just told them, I said, this is something that the Lord's been leading me into for a long time and that I'm feeling called to become a Roman Catholic. And if they wanted to talk to me about it on a deeper level, I basically explained to them how, you know, in our situation, the the things that were happening within our denomination were causing me to really dig back into the ultimate questions of authority and of the, the church what, what, and, what things were happening? What kind of questions came up? Well, we were, our, so the Methodist church, like a lot of, of mainline Protestant denominations, is going through a bit of an identity crisis when it comes to things like um, human sexuality and marriage and the scripture. 
And those basically what was happening was we were seeing more and more division that was happening along those lines. And in our denomination, the, you could, there's a, a conference every four years where basically the doctrine and teaching of the church can be changed according to whoever votes and how they vote. And people were starting just to, to blatantly disobey the teaching of our church. Um, and their mindset was, well, this is, this is uh, my interpretation and this is just what I'm going to do. And, and who are you to tell me what the Bible says about anything? And, and so I would have a lot of conversation with people where I would talk about, well, here's what the scripture says and here's what the church has always taught. And they would say, well, that's your church. You know, mm-hmm. my, I don't, it doesn't matter. It's, it's all about what I think right here, right now, which caused me to really begin to look into the whole issue of authority and how which do we people know? rebel against the concept of authority? Don't bring that up. Absolutely. Don't bring that up. You know, we might have to take over part of your city. You know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, don't get me started. Yeah. I mean, the whole idea of authority is, I think, the most important issue when it comes to faith, because if we don't have a sense of authority, then we don't know really what the Christian faith even is, because we could just basically make up whatever we want to make up and call it whatever we want to call it. And if we're at the center of it and we're the ones calling the shots, even if we have a Bible, who cares? We can make the Bible say whatever we want it to say if we're the ones that get to say what it means. And what I was trying to find out was, well, what did Jesus say that it means? And what did he teach his earliest followers about that? And what was their role? And what I realized was I was on a different trajectory, Bear, because what I saw a lot happening in my culture was people who had the mindset that the job of the Christian church is to bring the message of the gospel for modern times in a way that makes sense to modern ears. And then invariably what happens is that gets the message changes. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm all about sharing the message in a way people in modern times can understand, but we can't change the message. Right. And this whole idea of, of recognizing that the role of the church is not to adapt the message to the culture, but to preserve the message right? To preserve the truth of the gospel given by Christ to his apostles, to preserve that and present that, right? Preserve mm-hmm. and present. That's, mm. that's when I started to realize, well, where are we, who's doing that? It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the, the, the mainline Protestants. I can tell you that right now. They weren't trying to preserve and present. They were trying to progress mm-hmm. in what was happening. And that of course leads to chaos. And the more I dug into it and look back into it, I realized that You know, there is a church founded by Christ. There is a church given the deposit of faith by Jesus with the promise that that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And it's the Catholic Church. And once I realized that, you know, and experienced that, I I, I had to do it. How did you come to the, I mean, because I was talking to someone the other day, people, I call it, well, you're going to be the church of John Smith. You know, I have my, I have my interpretation and God can faithfully tell me how to worship and what to do. But he tells the next person next to you something different. Well, they're wrong because I'm, 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 I know this is what, in other words, it becomes not just the schism between Protestants and Catholics, but then 50,000 denominations. But now it's not even that. Everybody is their own individual church now. This is what yeah. I believe, you know. How did you come to understand the magisterium? How did you come to understand that Jesus had given a teaching authority? Well, ultimately, because it's in the Bible. And when you look at Matthew 16 and you see Jesus beginning his church and he he founds the church on the rock of Peter, you look at that. That's a verse that as a Protestant, I was trained to either ignore or interpret completely differently than most of Christianity has throughout history. Yeah, you know, it's the the strange uncle that comes around at Christmas time. You want to kind of ignore it, right? Yeah, exactly. And I remember I remember talking to one of my seminary professors about that and, and asking her, saying, well, what, what does this verse mean? Peter is the rock upon which the church would, Christ would build his church. And she said, well, we believe that that, that verse is about Peter's faith. Right. And I, I said, well, the, the sources I'm reading and the apologetics of Roman Catholics that I'm reading are pointing back throughout history and saying that uh, that's not what it means. So why do we believe differently? And when did we start? And she said, well, because we're Protestants. That and was our believe, answer. Yeah, that yeah. So it's a circular logic. So yeah, that, because that we have belief. to because we're Protestants. If we yeah. if we don't believe that, we have to be Catholics. And I was like, I was coming face to face with, you know, reading some of the earliest teachings of the church, Ignatius of Antioch, people like that. Even reading like Augustine in the in the fourth century, you know, talking about the Bishop of Rome and the primacy of Rome and and 
and starting to understand these things, but then also reading just in the, in the gospels, how Christ said to his apostles, he who hears you, hears me. And how in the book of Acts, the, the apostles gathered together and elected a successor to Judas. And then how they gathered together at the Jerusalem council and they wrestled through questions. And then what did they do, Barrett? They took that answer to those questions that came to them. It seemed good to us and, and the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. Yes. And then they sent out Paul and Silas and the others with the explicit intent to deliver that message and decision to the rest of the churches. And so then you, mm -hmm. you don't see these churches just kind of off doing their own thing going, well, over here, we do it this way over here. We do it this way. No, the church in Jerusalem said, well, here's our decision. Abide by it. And you see That's authority. Cle yeah, there was authority. Uh, you yeah. see uh, Clement of Rome, the third bishop of Rome, the third pope, basically writing a letter to Corinth. Saying, as our brother Paul, you know, exhorted you, you know, he was correcting them, giving them fatherly correction. As a, and as that Saint Irenaeus of Lyon wrote, again, when he's writing against the, the Gnostic heresies, he was, you know, this is what I'm writing. But if anything in here in here conflicts with the teaching of Rome, you know, I submit I submit to Rome. And so it's it's not uh, it's it's a scary thing to say. Oh well, this the that there is that there is church authority. You know, but but that's where Jesus consoles us and says the gates of hell will not prevail against us. We've had a lot of scoundrels, we've had a lot of horrible popes, we've had a lot of horrible bishops and cardinals. But in, in spite of all of that, the the teaching of the church has not changed. The, you know, the, the 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 truth of the church has prevailed. I, there was one particular pope who became a pope. I forget his name now because he was going to support a certain heresy. I think it was the Her Arian heresy. After he became a pope, he totally flipped you know he couldn't do it he couldn't proceed with that so we're not saying that that um the men uh the bishops cardinals priests and popes are perfect uh we do know that when the pope writes in a certain way ex cathedra that it's it then only at that moment is he infallible but he can only he but even then he can't write anything that's inconsistent with catholic moral teaching catholic catholic doctrinal teaching we jesus was a builder right keith yeah, the very first thing yeah. you do is you build a foundation, and that's he established an authority. And it's so interesting how you can just kind of say, "Well, yeah, Peter, that was just talking about his faith." You can like the same thing to talk about the Eucharist. You can just, unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you can have no part of me. Well, that's not what Jesus really meant. Well, if it's not what he really meant, and five thousand people left him that day, uh, maybe he should have put out another press release. You know? <laughs> so yeah, we're I think that mm -hmm. I think that when people recognize that, their initial reaction is. Oh, authority is a scary bad thing, but actually authority is a gift because it keeps us it keeps us from from danger. You know, it keeps us from from mass chaos. So it's something to be thankful for. If you want to be a part of that, what is it, chop or whatever it is, you know, you can go into chaos and anarchy, uh, or you can go under or you can be under authority. And authority is so important. Remember, the man who had the most faith in all of Israel was a man who understood authority. He said, Jesus, will you heal my servant? And Jesus said, I'm on my way. And he said, no, it's not necessary that you come under my roof. Just speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority. And I have servants under me. And I say to one, go. And he goes. Another one comes and he comes. Just speak the word. Being under authority is a, a tremendous spiritual weapon because Satan is the one who's a rebel. Satan, uh, Satan's kingdom is run by intimidation and by rebellion, but when you're under the authority of the church, it's like a wall of protection around Amen. you. We talked with Keith Nestor, uh, a recent Catholic convert whose ministry is just exploding. His book is called The Convert's Guide to Roman Catholicism. Where can, where can they find you, Keith? Uh, they can find me at on YouTube at Keith Nestor. My website is down to earthministry.org, down the number two earthministry.org. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and 
depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your Kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to say a shout out to the mama bears out there. It's just so cool how often we hear from you. Uh, you go to our stores, you may be buying our, mar- our Bears Man Cave cigars for your men or a t-shirt. And then all of a sudden you realize that we have things there for you too. Uh, we have the this new thing that the Holy Spirit's been really speaking to us about. It's been interesting. Uh, called the mama bears. There's nothing more fierce than a mama bear. And so uh, we're beginning to develop uh, an area of our ministry really to give you weapons to uh, to fight the good fight and to help communicate the gospel to your family and especially to the men in your lives. We're talking with Keith Nestor. Uh, he's a recent Catholic convert. Not that recent. Now, how's it been? A few years. 2017. 2017. And he's written this book, The Convert's Guide to Roman Catholicism. Keith, what is God saying to men about their sons right now? When you see what's going on in the streets, it's like a bunch of um, uh, sons who don't have fathers. That's what it, the way it strikes me. The, I agree. I feel like what we're seeing right now is the result of the the lack of 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 fatherly discipline and really fatherly love because what i'm seeing to me anyway looks a lot like a cry for love we're crying out for love we have this we have this inner desire for um for justice and when we see something that that is a representative of injustice there's a part of us that wants to say hey wait a minute that's not fair that's not right and and we want we want the father to step in and make that right okay so that's one side of it the other side of it is if we don't get what we want we're going to throw a fit and we're going to rage and we're going to scream and freak out and i feel like the father's job is to do both things the father's job is to correct injustice and to say i i'm going to 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 dole out justice as a as a as a father and the other thing is the father is there to to um to bring discipline and to bring safety because people rage and they go nuts when they're cornered and why do they do that because they're scared because they they don't have control but when you have a loving father in your life that is basically says it's okay i've got this you know i think that's what we need more than anything i think we need fathers to tell their sons and their daughters to say look i've got this you don't need to freak out. You don't need to rage. You don't need to worry about injustice. I will protect you. I will take care of you and I will guide you. And there's just a lot of a lot of people running around right now with with no guidance because they're scared. You know, often men uh they their their focus so much is on making a living to provide for the family and I get that. You know, for the moment I signed on as a young father, my I became a hired gun, you know, wherever I can make the most money to help my help my family. You know, so you get so focused on your work uh, that you you tend to focus sometimes on the urgent things instead of the important things. Like I'd love to come to to your soccer game, but I got to do this. I'd love to coach your your baseball team, but I've got to do this. I'd love to take you to church on Sundays, but Daddy's tired on Sundays. You know, there's <clears throat> there's these ur- urgent things that take the re- the place of the important things. Eventually, though, if you don't take care of the important things, like spending time with your children, they're going to become urgent. And it's not going to be it's not going to be fun. 
Amen. I think that people people want to feel a part of something. They want their it's, it's to me it's a lot about identity. It's like where do you get your identity? And right now what we're seeing is people are gaining their identity being on either one side of an issue or another side of an issue. And you can see it. I mean, mm. each identity has its the way it speaks, the way it looks, the way it dresses, and the one thing that that has in common is they hate the other side. Mm. And why do why do young men in particular, I mean young women too, but young men in particular have this desire to be part of the tribe, you know, be part of a team, to be part of a group. And I really feel like when the father doesn't say, well, our family is our own identity, right? Like, here's what we do. Here's how we act as a family. Then that young man is going to go and seek that out in some other place. And then it's just going to be whoever has the loudest voice and is mm -hmm. the most intimidating because we get intimidated into being a part of certain things, don't we? You mm -hmm. know, it's like, oh, well, you better do it this way. Or you're going to be in trouble. You better go along with this Bullied. with this way of thinking or or you're going to be, you know, uh, ostracized or whatever. Whereas I think the fathers need to come along and say, look, this is who we are as a family. This is how we behave. This is how mm -hmm. we take care of each other. And there's security in that. And when you have mm -hmm. that security, then you don't you don't get carried away by all this other stuff that happens. I think so many men are, have been cowed into apologizing for their own existence. That's why like my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue it's for men and women, but it talks about uh, virtue, you know, and, and manly virtue, heroic virtue. Uh, and if, if you're a man and you're trying, you're struggling with what is God's will for my life, look, as we say in Hawaii, the kuleana that God has given you. What is your areas of responsibility? Focus on that. Yeah. What is the prior, what just, if you focus on your responsibilities and you look for the good uh, in each of those situations, and and then you and then you not only will the good, but you do that through self donation. You're going to see transformation within your family. Don't be afraid to be manly. That doesn't mean to be a, a sh chauvinistic jerk. We're not talking about that. A real man lays down his life for his family. But don't be afraid to be manly. Don't you don't have to apologize for your existence. Get a backbone. Uh, my wife and I have been watching a, a series called Twenty Four, and there's a very weak president. And his wife just wants him to just get a backbone, just mm -hmm. you know, make a decision, even if it's the wrong one, make a decision. And so we're just saying for men, if you spend time in prayer, if you're spending time with other men to get formed, young men, if you've been raised in a household where your mother hates men because her fa your father betrayed her or didn't or didn't live up to the expectations, if you've been raised in a single home without a man, you need to find a, become maybe a member of Knights of Columbus or join a join a join a. Uh, Go to start going to men's conferences. Go to a That Man Is You uh, weekly uh, program that you can find at a lot of your local churches. Go to our website. We can help you find it. You need to get around other men. If you find yourself looking in the mirror and wondering who you are or even hating yourself because you're a man, you, uh, God can God can help you understand who you are in Christ. But you gotta you gotta get with other men for that to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you know the culture, of course, is going to play on this because. The culture, what does the culture want? It wants our money, it wants our vote, and it wants our submission, okay? Mm. So what the culture is going to do is it's going to tell you you're going to be defined by, um, you know, who you listen to, what you buy, and, um, you know, how you view the world according to certain political ideology. So the culture is going to try to instill those things in you and then, and then paint you into a corner and say, this is how you have to be. But what God can do, what godly fathers have the ability to do is say, look, it doesn't matter what you look like, how much money you have, whether you have an Apple or a PC, whether you ride a Harley or a Kawasaki or whatever. What matters is, do you love Jesus? Are you part of God's family? And that's where your principal identity comes from. So like when you go to mass, you see all these dads with their little kids and their, their big families. <laughs> what you're seeing there is really, the, and this is the way God designed it to be, what you're seeing there are, are moms and dads that are saying, look, this is... This is our identity. Our identity isn't in what city we live in or what team we cheer for or, or what movies we watch. Our identity or, or what color our skin is or any of that kind of stuff. Our identity is found in the fact that we are God's precious sons and daughters. We're God's children that have been called by God to be, to be in relationship with him. 
And when we teach our children that, when we bring them up in the faith and we teach them that's their primary identity, then they become immune to all this other stuff that's running around. That's right. The problem is we don't have that. We have too many people that are just like dropped off and or abandoned altogether. And it's like dads say to their kids, look, I'm providing a, a, a living for you or whatever. Now you go figure that stuff out on your own. So what do the kids do? They pick up their cell phones and they pick up their this and their that. And they let the world tell them who they're supposed to be instead of letting God tell them who they're supposed to be. Right. There's nothing more important for men than that you be a father to your children. Uh, when you see yeah. a breakdown in community, it's usually be, in, in, a, in a community, it's usually because the fathers are not engaged with their sons, or with their children, but especially with their sons. I see um, Cindy and I do this walk over to Fort de Roos and we take a swim in the afternoon uh, and we see men walking that proud father with a little baby on his chest, you know, and we yeah, see, we see a lot of fathers with their, with their children. That's what real man is. And frankly, that's what real adventure is. The most adventurous thing you can do, man, is, is bring an eternal being into existence and nurture and father and protect and guide that child. So man, if you're confused and you're lost and you have that baby, that young child that you've kind of abandoned or, or to, because you're too busy at your career or you've left the family, uh, and left the woman to take to totally raise that child. Get back to your kuleana. Get back to your responsibility. As Pope Paul, his first book was Love and Responsibility. They go hand in hand. We're talking with Keith Nestor. Keith, where can they find you again? Uh, the best place to find me is my website, which is down the number two earthministry.org, or you can go on my YouTube channel, which is just just do a Keith Nestor channel search on YouTube, and you'll find all kinds of stuff there. And what's the name of your podcast, by the way? It's called Catholic Feedback. You don't have and guests. A, you basically have write-in questions, and you respond to them. Is that how it works? Yep. People send people email questions to me, and then I I answer those questions, respond to them. And the per, the purpose of the podcast is to to communicate the eternal truths of the Catholic faith um, in, in, into our everyday lives. So to to connect those two things. So we're going to write some letters to him, try to stump Keith Nestor. Bring it on, man. Bring it on. <laughs> You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You can go to deepadventure.com, subscribe to our email newsletter, and you get a free audio book of my most recent book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. So don't want to miss out on that. And, until next week, Keith, thanks, thanks for being with us. Anytime, Bear. We'll, I really enjoy it. Yeah, we'll have you on again. Until next meet, week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.